world we live in is plagued by both natural and man-made disasters. The global humanitarian community responds to these emergencies, providing vital aid to those in need. To enable delivery of critical relief, there must first be communications. Thank you so much. It's very hard to really demonstrate how communications support a humanitarian operation, but if we try to imagine what would happen if we didn't have communications, um, in the end, humanitarian operations is about coordination. And coordination is about information and sharing that information. The Emergency Telecommunications Cluster is a network of organizations that work together in humanitarian disasters to provide these critical information and communication services. OPEX Bravo is a large-scale operational exercise for telecommunications, IT and electrical skill sets. Its goal is to give participants experience with technical solutions deployed by the emergency telecommunications cluster in a simulated disaster situation. OPEX Bravo aims at giving all the the IT responders uh, a common language and a chance to train together so when they're being deployed out in the field they know who to talk to, uh, what the, each of them have to do uh, so they can deliver telecommunication services uh, in a more efficient way. This intensive one-week emergency simulation is prepared in conjunction with humanitarian, private sector and governmental partners. The interagency approach provides participants with a well-rounded exercise reflecting cooperation and coordination required in actual operations. Simulating a real emergency, participants work in teams to set up equipment and establish services under challenging conditions and tight time frames. Anything can happen at any time. So I would like to uh, be them aware of that, that nothing is going smoothly and assuming that everything will be fine. Secondly, uh, of course, uh, uh, they need to make sure that everything is installed properly and as fast as possible. They have to set up their, uh, the ETC solution and this is where they're deploying data, telecommunications, electrical, setting up the camp. Um, to serve the humanitarian community that require these services in the country when an emergency happens. Living conditions in emergencies are usually very simple. The teams need to adapt to this and make the best of it. Accommodation here is basic as well. One tent is home to a team of four. You get to know people's personal habits and um, unfortunately I snore. so. <laughs> Um, but this is just it. You have to take it as it comes. Humanitarian operations bring frequent challenges and emergency responders must be able to adapt to the rapidly changing environment. In addition to technical exercises, OPEX Bravo consists of a number of unforeseen events. These exercise injects are designed to confront participants with incidents that can actually happen when working in an emergency and teach them how to manage situations. A simulated minefield situation disrupts the regular setup process at one of these sites. All exercise injects are observed by facilitators. Participants are debriefed and given constructive feedback at the end of each simulation. That was of course a, a very, um, a very difficult situation as it became pretty clear in the beginning that we are facing some, some mine issues so it's really no way to get in there. So um, the, the only thing we could actually do is try to get contact to the outside to get support and then of course this issue with the, with the first aid kit then we can try to supply help. Through a number of non-technical emergency experiences such as medical and security scenarios, border crossings and interpersonal conflicts, OPEX Bravo provides opportunities for participants to work together and learn from each other. You should always have an evacuation plan and uh, somewhere to go when you need to evacuate and uh, of course uh, you need to 
um, get have easy access to you all your things or some of your things so you can grab them when you uh, need to go away very very fast uh, so that's very important uh, I mean there's always lessons learned and hopefully the participants have identified what they would do differently the next time I think the uh, the nighttime blaze inject last night really sort of set them in the mindset that they're actually in an emergency. I got in order for participants to learn the most from OPEX Bravo, facilitators in exercise control need to constantly adapt the inject plan according to the progress and response of each team. Has everyone checked out the Facebook site? Yeah. All right, so that's it for me. There's no more questions. Um, to coordinate with your teams to go... During the morning briefing, tasks are assigned and details discussed. A training exercise on the scale of OPEX Bravo requires a considerable number of personnel. THW's experienced training staff as well as volunteers from the German Federal Agency for Technical Relief act as characters providing participants with realistic scenarios. In the evenings, exercise debrief sessions are held with all participants and facilitators to discuss achievements during the day and identify what they learned from each situation. We believe that giving training is the best investment that you can give. Uh, nowadays you can find here the best return rates uh, than you can find uh, all over in the banking system. Uh, it is the biggest value for us as an operational organization being available worldwide, having our partners with us and give them training and make them prepared for a good uh, result worldwide and a good cooperation with us. A large scale exercise like OPEX Bravo requires a lot of support. On behalf of the Emergency Telecommunications Cluster, WFP and THW thank all partners for making this exercise possible and helping to advance the emergency response capabilities of the global humanitarian community.